everyone. I have Miss Minister, Minister Keisha Laudemans here, and she's going to assist me tonight. And we're going to have a good time. We're going to release the word of God so that you, with all of your getting, you can get understanding. So that you can rise up to your rightful place, and that's seated in that heavenly place is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, and what does this say on there? Read that to me out loud, everyone. Aha, uh -huh. when you become fearless, life becomes limitless. So if you're not afraid of the devil, you can whip his butt, Amen. correct? Amen. So what we're going to do is let's go to Ephesians. This place, I believe, has already been prepared. When we came in, we had wonderful music in the prayer room, and, and the word was coming forth to us. I, I just love it. And then to come in here, it's, it's like mm -hmm. you're prepared. Right? Amen. Amen. So, Father God, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I thank you. You are the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the Father of glory. I ask you and I already thank you for giving us your wisdom, your revelation, for giving us your knowledge, for giving us the eyes of our understanding that they're open, that we will know. What is the hope of your calling? What is the riches of your glory? What is our inheritance as your saints? That's what we want to know. We want to uncover the mysteries of this word through Jesus Christ so with all of our getting will get understanding. Can you do Amen. that? Amen. Boy, if we can move closer, I won't have to. Judy, why don't you come over here, sweetheart? Okay, what we're going to do, let's get right to our book. Now, um, last week, we, we on page 96, let's just go back and look at a few exciting things. I don't know about you, but it's exciting when you go out there with people and they have a need and you're able to pray for them. Yes. And God gives you that discernment so that you'll know what to say, who to say it to, and when. But we've got to always wait on him, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and he will lead and guide you. And you you know what? I told you this before. When I used to get a drunk, you thought you got a high. The next day, you're so sick. Now, when you get drunk on the word, you get so high, you're just floating. It just feels so wonderful to know that he is there for us all the time. So when we go back here, I want you to all go back here to page 96. Okay, now is that, can you see her? No, you can't see her. We'll just put that down for now. Okay. Yeah, just, just make it little. So healing, a holy flow. Did you, did you ever hear of getting into the rhythm of something? How many of you have a rhythm at home that on Monday you do the laundry, Tuesday you do the ironing, Wednesday you cook the meals for the week, or you go shopping? Or No, you don't do that. No. Okay. <laughs> See, I used to do that. I used to do that. I, uh, you know, because I wanted to go to, to the store like once every two weeks or something like that because I had to travel. And using gas, this is many years ago. So you, what are you going to have? Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, right? So you go shopping, you find out those things, you put them in the refrigerator, the day comes along. If you have leftovers, you can have that next week. You understand what I'm saying, don't you? But the healing flow, would you read that in Luke 14.1? And it came to pass as he went into the house of the one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day that they watched him. We just want to discuss this a little bit. Is, is the devil watching you now? Is he mm -hmm. trying to trip you up? Mm -hmm. Yes. But can he do it? Yes. But you're going to come out smelling like a rose. Amen. That's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Because we're going to make mistakes. That's why Jesus paid the price. Now, I want people to get that microphone and tell me, now, whoever was here last week, you were in the flow. 
you've got an idea what all happened here with the critical eye. Do you know people that have a critical eye and they watch you? And if you say one word wrong, they get offended? Do you see that? Why do they do that to pastors, even to me? I'm a human, right? So who has something to add to that? Adds to that. Because we're gonna we're gonna just perch her for a little while because we don't want to forget what we studied last week so we can move on. Okay? You wanna start? <laughs> With the I finger. was just thinking about um, you know, a people when you get offended. It's because you have it, your own things going on in you. And it's not what that person's saying. It's because you already have an issue to begin with. Yes. And you're trying to hide something. The people are easily, easily offended. And they're always blaming another person for what they did. What does that mean? They've got something that's hiding. And they don't want it brought out. I really think, I think yet very much so that women bring out things faster than men. It's a proven thing. Okay, they go for help before a man. All right, Jimmy Evans, Sharon Evans, right? You remember those stories. Okay, so Jesus knew they had a critical eye, didn't he? He knew what they were doing, didn't he? Did he care? No, because the thing was, they were bringing to the top their what? Critical spirit, their sin. Isn't that what they were doing? Mm -hmm. They were showing they were ignorant, they were sinning. Okay? And what did Jesus do with people like that? What did he do with people like that, that had that critical eye? Did he get angry at them? Did he forgive them? Did he make excuses for them? No. Oh, no. Because he, he just would bring it out and it's done. He was never critical, but they were critical. He always operated in love. Okay? Because people, you know, people will see you by your fruit. People will just be drawn on to you wherever you go. They'll just be drawn on to you, right? And before you know it, you'll be stopped in the grocery store or someplace, and they'll be talking to you. What an opportunity to tell them about Jesus if the Holy Spirit says, tell them about my Jesus. Or he'll say, just let them feel. Let them feel that anointing that's coming off of you onto them, because that's all Jesus, that's not me. It's all about him, Amen. right? And they will feel that anointing, and they'll know what you've got is they want a piece of that. Amen. Do we understand that? Mm -hmm. Or they'll become very angry with you. Why are they very angry? Because they're so angry with themselves. People really are, you know, again, when they get angry at you, at me, or anybody, that's a Christian, you know, most like they're angry at themselves. But they got to blame somebody else for what they have done and what they've done with their life. And they're going to do everything they can to try to destroy you. Is that going to work? No, because it's going to go back on their own heads and it's going to destroy them. And I don't want that. I don't want them. Jesus didn't want that. Okay, did you have something? Of, by the Holy Spirit, and they don't want to admit it. Yep, they're being convicted by the Holy Ghost. But they don't know how to bring it out. They don't know how because they feel so incompetent, so unloved. So, you know, but it's always somebody else's fault. Hmm? Right? No, it's not. We, once we take responsibility, we're free. Amen. And they can be free. And that's what I pray for, that people that come up against me, I pray for them so they will be free. I don't pray for them to be harmed. I don't want that. Somebody prayed for me. Praise God. 
Okay, let's, let's go on here. In um, Luke 14, 5 says, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? Why were they protecting the Sabbath day? Because they had their commandments, 630 rules. You couldn't even have a bowel movement on the Sabbath. That's pretty bad. You could walk just so many steps on the Sabbath. They added and added and added so they could tighten it up. But here, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were breaking every one of the rules. Did you realize that? Breaking every one of the rules with their anger, with their hate, with their trying to put people down instead of helping people. So they valued their animals more than a human being. Do we do that today? Oh. I, uh, this is a long time ago. This woman had a lot of money. She had this Siamese cat, just a beautiful cat. She left her inheritance to the cat. Millions of dollars to a cat. Right? Give her the microphone. Give her the microphone. Kenny, give her that microphone. Come on, come on. You say it out there. You got to say it in I there. I well, somebody's going to take really good care of that cat. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> oh, you just took a bath. <laughs> Did you ever see a kid try to baptize a cat? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So, so when they have a compassion more for an animal or for an item, a car, a hobby. You know what I'm saying? We're not to take anything over Jesus. Jesus is number one. And you've got to have that relationship with Jesus, and it's got to be a trusting, loving relationship where you take him first, not yourself. Anybody want to share anything on that? You always talk to us about sir, you have to be a servant first. If we figure that out, we can accomplish anything. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful, though? And I want to, again, thank everybody that came to our house on Saturday and did all the outdoor work and the indoor work. That was so awesome. But the, I think the fellowship was even better. It's just having the people around and laughing and, you know, it's, it's fun. But okay, let's go on to page 99. Okay, the noble man's son, chapter 8. Would you like to start reading, okay. please? So Jesus came again into the Canaan of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there were, was a certain nobleman whose my glasses, son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went into, unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was uh, at the point of death. Did, then, you, did you get that? Now, when, when we're reading things like this, put yourself there and see what was really going on at the point of death, right? Mm -hmm. What did that mean? That was like the gentleman that sat next to me at Karis when we were the first week of October. And I said, you have a testimony. And that's just what I discerned. He said, I do. Well, the testimony was he had, that was on his right side. It was like a half of a golf ball, no, no, tennis ball size, big lump on him. And it was cancerous. And when his family saw it, they said, you go get uh, chemo right away. Why didn't you go early? It's, in plain words, it was too late. But jump into chemo and see if it can help you. Did you get that? But he didn't do that. Him and his wife, because he, his father was a doctor, and people around him were doctors. So what he had to do now, think about this, he had to separate himself, him and his wife, from, from his family. That's pretty hard when you're close. But he had to separate himself 
from his family and what happened, they decided they would send him to Karis Bible College so he would be under that word for four hours every day. And that word was flushing over him. That was this year. When we were there the first week in October, he was completely healed of cancer. Amen. That's because the word right now is washing over you, and yeah. you don't even realize what it's doing for you. Just like when that shofar horn is blowing, what does that do to the pineal gland that opens it up, and in your healing will flow right through Amen. you. Things that you have been asking for, dreaming about, Amen. There will be things that come that you won't even understand. But God knows what he's doing, right? Amen. So anyway, at the point of death, now he said they're trying to figure things out at home to get the money so his wife can come and join him. Amen. You see the excitement in that home? Now, does your family know? Not yet. I don't know if he's going to go home and show him or what he's going to do, but when I sat there listening to that, I was just glued to him. You know, it just think what he went through. At the point of death, he was at the beyond stage, his family said. You should have been in there. And they're all coming at him. And him and his wife had to separate themselves. And it's already hard to separate yourself when you're just in any when you're in a good condition. Yeah. But when you're in a bad condition, when you're not feeling well, you kind of do want to be around your family. <laughs> or when you're getting sick, like he, this guy was close to death. A lot of times people start calling people in to come and um, be by them because they're, they're thinking they're, they're about to go home. Yeah. Uh, invite them in to say goodbye to them. Yeah. We've heard of that already. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not getting in here. We're just like Kyle. Mm -hmm. When Pastor Kenny said to the doctors and the nurses that were standing in that room and talking about he's got this and he's got that, it was just doom and gloom. And Pastor Kenny said, could you step outside and discuss that, talk about this? He didn't want Kyle to hear that. Mm -hmm. Kyle was in a coma. He still can hear. Amen. Get it? Mm -hmm. So... When you look at that, and did they tell you, Pastor Kenny, did somebody tell you to watch so people wouldn't come in the room? Or yeah, Tracy did. Tra after I asked those doctors and nurses and stuff to do the meeting out by the nurse's station, then Tracy said to me, will you make sure nobody else comes into this room and starts talking negatively? Amen. And so I followed my daughter's orders. Yes. <laughs> but it, listen, this stuff is serious. Mm -hmm. I, do you care, care about hurting feelings? Yes, we do. But when it comes to life or death, mm -hmm. you got to cut that. you got to cut that off. Mm -mm -mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Who would sleep with a poisonous snake? Mm -mm. That would not be good, would it? then why do we hang around people that are negative and pulling us down? Because what happens again here, we have our eagle, and our eagle is flying high, but then the devil starts speaking to him. You can't do it. You're not this. You're not that. You know what you're doing yet? Do you know that you're still drinking and smoking, Didi? And Didi says, yep, but guess what? I'm free. I'm free. Amen. Because while she's in listening to the word, she's getting free. Amen. You get that? Yes. So many times we think we have to clean up before we come to God. Stop Amen. it. You don't have to clean up. He will clean you up. Amen. I don't care what you do. I really don't. I don't. Just, he'll take care of it. That's not my circus, not my monkey. Okay, let's go on. I think I'm right here. Then said Jesus yeah. unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, you will, you will not believe. The noble, the noble man said unto him, sin come down. Sir. Oh, I have these glasses. 
Sir, come <laughs> down. Er, er, my child, child died. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Ah. How would you feel about that? Well, let's Good. go on and let's find out what the rest of the story says. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. That was one o'clock. Okay. Is that amazing or is that amazing? That is. And was this a two-day travel trip? Amen. See, God, we've got to remember, is there a time in heaven? God had to put time for us, but in heaven there's no time. You know, and we say, the doctor says, do this for just so many days, do that just for many days. And you go, wait a minute, I'm not in a time zone in heaven. I can have that in two hours. No, Amen. wait a minute, I can have that an hour. Wait a minute. Ten minutes. What do you mean right now? I want it right now. Amen. And he'll give it to you. You want to get to that point where you trust God so much that you can have it right now. I don't care how bad it looks. Got it? When you look at that man with that big tumor on there, I mean, he was tired. He was wore down. Went to Karis and sitting under the word. That's what his whole key was there sitting under the word, going back, looking up scripture, listening more. He dedicated his life to the word. Amen. <laughs> they didn't worry about money problems. Amen. Okay, go ahead. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was, he was come out of Judea into Galilee. John 4, 46 through 54. This passage shows us the first healing recorded under the ministry of Jesus. Yet it was his second miracle, the first miracle where Jesus turned water into wine at a wedding feast took place in Canaan, the city where this nobleman met Jesus. It must be noted that this first healing was not an instantaneous healing. Instead, the sick boy began to amend, verse 52. Although it was not instantaneous, it was still a miracle. Too often, believers are guilty of assuming that all miracles are instantaneous. The enemy takes advantage of this wrong thinking and causes doubt to arise. Then they end up losing out on their miracle. Wow. The lepers were healed as they went away. So, it, see, it's between your prayer and the manifestation is where the buzzard picks on you. See? But then remember, you're going to go take your rightful place. You're going to speak the word. You're going to speak what is the word you're going to speak, whatever word gives you the promise in the word. And that old buzzard on there, that crow, cannot stand the altitude. The devil cannot stand the altitude that we go to. He can't even come near the throne of God. Amen. He cannot come near the throne of God. And that's where we go. Okay? Let's go on. The, the man, man who grew. One healing evangelist of the 1950s related the, the testimony of a man whose growth had been stunted, and he was abnormally short. After receiving prayer in this evangelist healing line, nothing happened immediately, but over the course of several months, the man grew several inches in height. Although his miracle wasn't instantaneous, it was still a miracle. We miss the supernatural by confining God to the instantaneous. This man could have looked at his physical condition after having received prayer, seen no difference in his height, and walked away in unbelief, thinking that the d d divine healing doesn't work. If he had done that, he would have lost out on a great miracle. Obviously, he didn't do that. He believed his condition changed when he received prayer. Wow. 
Amen. So, so when you're ready to get prayed over and you've got an image of yourself being healed or receiving this word to the fullest, then you get prayed over. Because then you got your agreement and right there it's done. But now the manifestation has to come. So you're going to spend a lot of time up here, aren't you? Amen. Why? Because there's a thief that's going to come and try to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? Right. But you're not going to let him. Because during the time of prayer and the time of the manifestation, you can be very weary. But that's why you've got to watch who you hang around because people can steal from you. Right? Right. Okay, we've got that all, don't we? So, a new body part. Another evangelist told of the woman who came into his healing line wanting prayer to have a missing toe restored to her foot. A year later, she found the evangelist at a meeting and testified that God had created a new toe on her foot. She told him that nothing seemingly happened at the time she was prayed for, but she kept thanking God every day for her new toe. Over the course of a year, the new toe began to form, and it grew little by little. Just think how the devil could have robbed her of this miracle if she had gone by what she saw at the time she was prayed for. When the prayer of faith is offered, healing always begins. And as we continue to release our faith, the power of God continues to flow. For the healing to be consummated, our faith must continue. Mark 16, 18 says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That recovery process may happen quickly or take longer. So, so some will recover more quickly than others, but that is certainly no reason to doubt. Now, what, again, what is the person going to go? What did she do in between getting that prayer and a year later that little toll restored? She thanked him, but where was she? You see, the thing of it is, when we... When we're out here, okay, a lot of times we go back to what we used to do, right? Mm -hmm. We get angry. We get offended. You know what just happened? The little toe cannot grow. You've just cut yourself right off when you should have been right here. Do you remember the woman? who the little boy couldn't walk, and she took him and dragged him yeah. every day. For, for how long did she drag him around? One year, she took him by the hand. What happened the last day? What did she do? He did what? He stood up and ran away. Started running. Did you get that? All of a sudden, and he took off. How many people would give up? Because, you see, we're, we're in a microwave world, and we want everything the way we want it. And if it doesn't go, we become discouraged. Why isn't it happening for me, Dee Dee? It did, but you know what you just did? You just told me you don't believe. That's why it's not happening. Really, if you get discouraged, and I've done that, and that the only reason I can say the things I do because I've done them, but I've become discouraged. Why, Father? Right there, I told him I didn't believe that prayer. So now I'm trying to push it on my own. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if we don't spend the time in the heavenly places, praying in the spirit, taking the word, because when you've got something bad going on, you'd better just back away. Hmm? It, remember the... The, the, the couple, and they had become pregnant. And the man said to his wife, he was a doctor, I'm going to take off from work. I'm going to take a leave, and you're going to take an abacus, and you're going to say by the stripes of Jesus, he was going to make confessions. Remember that? Yes. Remember that? Every day he did that. Every day he did that. Right? Mm -hmm. What did 
the doctor tell her husband that he didn't tell his wife? The baby has no brain. no brain. And the guy said, oh, no. When the doctor said abort the baby, he said, no. He said, no. But they kept on day after day, never telling her. They had to move, right? A doctor delivered a baby with a brain. It's all recorded. See, we give up because we want to push the chain. We want to do it our way. Guys, I do that. And now I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to write that down, and I'm not going to let go because right there is where I am. I have to be. I have to be. And I, I was telling somebody, you know, I get a lot of things sent to me to listen to, you know, Julie Green and X22, blah, blah. I, I'm 10, 11, now 12 behind. Unless God tells me to take one and listen, and when you most likely send me one, I listen to it. But I can't, and I just put it aside. Unless the Holy Spirit said, listen to that one. Why? Because I want to spend time right up here. Because God has great and mighty things for this church. Amen. And we want to walk in one accord with him. Amen. That's what I'm expecting from every one of you. If you don't, step aside. Don't get in our way. We got that, don't we? Amen. Yeah. So, I'm going to go back to this. Why did they have a critical eye again? What was the devil trying to sow into that meeting that Jesus Christ was there at and doing the healing? Division. And so, because they're walking on this earth, did Jesus give up? You don't give up. That's how strong you have to be. You don't give up. You, you might want to say, that isn't going to work. Just button your mouth and shut it up. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Good. Okay, let's go on. Um, continuous healing miracles. There are cases of people who live under a continuous miracle. A young evangelist who was struck with tuberculosis had hands laid on him by many different ministers, but he grew no better. When he was at death's door, he saw where he had missed it. He hadn't considered himself to be whole from the moment he received prayer. He realized he didn't, know, he didn't need more prayer. Instead, he needed to praise God for his healing, even while he was still bedfast. God longs to, be, to be believed without proof of evidence. The young evangelist immediately lifted up his voice to God and thanked him for healing him. At the end of two hours, the change had been made in his body, and he was healed. Years later, a doctor who didn't know of this man's previous condition was examining him and stated that his lungs were perfectly clear. Wow. But there was a hole in one lung. This man wasn't supposed to be able to live with this hole in his lung, but God was sustaining his life with a continuous miracle. Wow. Amen. Hey, what did Reggie White have that he wasn't supposed to live? What was that? Do you remember? Pastor? Yeah, sleep apnea. 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 There it is, apnea. Um, they, he wasn't supposed to. Didn't he have something else that went on, though, that he wasn't supposed to be able to live with the problem? I'm going to well, look. Well, he had... He, he had um, when he was playing, he tore his hamstring, I believe it was, and he was told he, he would be done playing for the year. And so he just didn't uh, receive that, and he kept praying for his healing. So the night before the game, coming game, he wasn't supposed to play. He went over and knocked on, uh, it was Coach Holgram at the time, knocked on his door says, I'm healed, I'll be playing tomorrow. And the coach says, no, you're not. The coach wouldn't believe him. And he said, I'm healed. I will play tomorrow. Yeah. And he did. And he did. Amen. And you just he, had look a at hole. Those. he had a hole in his 
M string there. It's something. You yeah. could put. It wasn't put connected or. In it. Yeah. Wow. Did you find anything on that, Brenda? But yeah, but he he played that way for a long time, and they said that was impossible. See, we what we want to do is get to the point where we believe God's word and not the devil. Amen. Don't believe what you hear down here. Believe what you hear from up there. Believe what's in this Bible. And you will see great and mighty things happen. Amen. Andrew was, was speaking, and I was listening to something today. And um, just think about this. He has this big rock. It's huge. And he carved out like a chair, and he'd sit and watch the world, right? Mm -hmm. And he noticed that there'd be a tree, wherever there was a little glitch in the rock, there'd be a tree in there or a plant or something. The birds would go over and drop a seed, right? Mm -hmm. And that would start to grow. That would split that rock, which dynamite wouldn't split. What, what's the point? What am I telling? Because the word is so powerful. Amen. That seed, everything on this earth is from a seed. You're from a seed. Nothing is impossible. And we take that seed, with, the word is the seed, we take that word and we speak it out loud. And it has to produce. When you get to that point, you will say there isn't anything once you become fear, fearless, life becomes limitless. See, we fear it's not going to work. But that's where we need to be is we, with all of our getting, get understanding. Can you give that testimony that you were telling me outside the door, or would you rather not? Well, some of it has come out. God said start that. I am. Um, Up there, nice and tight. I am. Um, um, I have been working with a person um, on a professional level for our biz businesses. And um, every time that we have had interaction together, I it was just discerning or sensing that he had a lot of like nervous energy, like maybe anxiety at some level or something deeper seated than that. Because you know, when you carry your anointing, it sometimes can stir things in other people. And so um, I didn't do anything, like I, there was nothing for me to do about it, except I was just observing these interactions. And So you were waiting on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And today, uh, we were, I was at a meeting that he was also at, and um, after the meeting, I went over to say hi, and we were just chit-chatting, and... Um, I was able to pray for him over some situations that he's going through, and that was very sweet. That you didn't expect. Right. Okay. But she desired it. Yes. Did you pray for it, or did you just desire? Um, That's a good question. Probably I thought about, you know, like, I, I probably was, you know, in my internal conversation with the Lord, yeah. there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. If you open the door, I'll walk through it kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. So you will, all of a sudden, there will be an unction that will rise up inside of you. And you'll want, all of a sudden, if you yield yourself to the Lord, you'll be talking to that person about what they have need of. You've had that happen, too. Not just once. You've. I think we've all at one time had that. But that unction is the Holy Spirit, and you open your mouth, and the Holy Spirit will fill your mouth. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, I know it's hard to give it all, but... I want to give more, but I just can't right now. But that's okay. Just that he was in a place where he was very much ready to be free and um, was sharing things at a level that would otherwise be... Not to say inappropriate, it wasn't that it was inappropriate, but just that, you know, like when you're, let me use this analogy, when you're like driving in a car and somebody, you know, cuts you off or whatever and 
it can like trigger emotions in you, like kind of like we, what you were saying before, Keisha, is when you get offended, it's not necessarily that it was the other person, but if there was something going on inside of you, it right, can trigger right. that. Mm -hmm. And so your reaction can be unreasonable to the actual situation because it's right. not that you're reacting to that, it's triggering something more deeper, right. seated or rooted. It was very much like that where the things that he was sharing was a lot more, it was a lot deeper seated and goes a lot farther back than just the surface situations that were triggering the reaction, if that makes so sense. So what the Holy Spirit was doing is bringing to the top his situations because God had supplied somebody there, such as Allie, that could help him. We don't realize we have that. So I'm excited because I think there's going to be an opportunity in the very near future, yeah. and he's very ready to be set free, which is awesome because when you work with people, it can be a struggle if they're not willing to let go fully. Absolutely. And he's ready, like desperate to be free. So mm -hmm. I'm anticipating if the door is open and I can walk through it, that it's going to be very smooth and easy just because he's so willing to, like, be worked with, if that makes sense. It will open, and it yeah. is open already. He Amen. opened that door. He did. Now the Holy Spirit will lead and guide and bring that together. Amen. That's the way he does it. It's so fun to be a part of somebody's freedom. It's just so fun. To, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, to let, because I, we can all say we've been in, the, I can see myself in his situation, like not different circumstances and different things, but I was in a place like that before. Right. And I was... God put you in my path to be able to set me or be an instrument to be able to set me free in areas. And so I am so grateful for where I am now as compared to 20 years ago. You know, or, right. you know what I mean? The I capacity do. in which I've been able to grow because I've been free. And yeah. when you're held captive to things, you can't grow. Right. So just anyway, I, from a place of gratitude, I was just talking to the Lord in my prayer time the other day, just that however you can use me, Lord, I'm open and willing to be used because I'm so grateful. It's from a place of gratitude of what you've done for me and in my life that I want to be able to share that same thing with as many people who are willing and ready to receive that. Absolutely. And if I can be an instrument in somebody else's freedom, I'm there. I am ready. Yes. And that's, that's, that's what God wants for us. I know that I have been gifted with that as well to go and, and – we went to school for that. I went down to Pennsylvania with Dr. Ed Smith. And uh, when I look at how many people I have been able to help over the years, and some people will let you go just so far, mm -hmm. and they're ready to break through, and they'll clam up. And they've got it so bad today yet. They will not release. It's become, uh, uh, what would you call it? The protection of yes. a blanket, poor me, look at poor me, everybody's picking on me. But they'll hold that instead of letting go of it and being free and being everything God wants them to be. Or we're just too prideful, we don't want to tell anybody what's going on. Right? I tell you, I, I believe this or not, but and you know this, and when I talked talk Dr. Hamburg, and I went, two guys especially two guys, went back into the womb and stuff was said when mama was pregnant with them. And that baby carried that until one was 40-some years old, a fireman. Isn't it amazing that God is here in the setting free? But the reason Dr. Hambrick said I was so uh, blessed to be able to do that and do it with satanically ritually abused is because I prayed in tongues and the Holy Spirit would give me what to say. I'm not smart enough for that. I'm not. But the Holy Spirit helped me. And when it sets you free, you're free indeed. Isn't that well? And I can work on myself. We can work on ourselves. So thank you. You want to share anything more on that? No? Okay. Um, let's go on. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing great. Which one are we at again? Seeing G No, no. Seeing Jesus is yep. okay. But let me just tell you, remember last week I said about obituaries? 
it says in the newspaper. And they fought a courageous battle against cancer. They, remember I said that? Just ticks me off so bad. They fought a courageous battle against cancer and they died of cancer? Does anybody get that? They lost. They fought a courageous, are you, if it was a courageous battle, they should be healed. Why does that get me upset? I, because it's denying that Jesus is the healer. It is, and they just flow right into it. You know, or another person that you know that you were working with could not believe that God could do that for them. Or God does it for somebody, and then they walk away right back into their same situation, and then you look and you think, it's not going to be long, and they're going to be gone too. Because we cannot come like myself. I'm free from alcohol. I'm free from smoking. But if I go back to that, do you think I'm going to be in good shape? I'm not going to be in good shape because I'm going back to where I was and I was in bondage. I don't care if people drink or smoke. I really don't care. But I'll, I'll guarantee you one thing. You will be free of it. The more you get that word in you, because when I asked Jesus into my heart, it all left. How that all happened? I was, I was looking at pictures today, um, cleaning off my desk. And there is Kenny sitting on, on a hassock at uh, Oral Roberts' feet. And Oral Roberts, I brought those letters and I brought thousands of dollars cash on myself on an airplane to give to Oral Roberts. All right? And he's reading this and he's saying, I will read every one of these and pray over these. And I still look, God, how did you get us? from Wisconsin, in his house. Just Kenny and I, and Sonny, the gal that writes his letters and does things now that Evelyn is gone. How did that happen? What did he want to do? He wanted to get the anointing on us for healing. Amen. Amen. Oh, when he's got more stuff, he told me. So I'm like, oh, God, just think. But people don't want to receive it. Got it? One of these days you will. Seeing Jesus isn't enough. The miracle of the healing of the nobleman's son speaks expressly to our, to our time because it shows us that Jesus doesn't have to be physically present for one to obtain healing. People want Jesus to appear to them and heal them, but seeing Jesus is, not, is no guarantee that you would receive healing. The woman with the issue of blood pressed her way through the crowd that was thronging Jesus. No doubt, many in that crowd needed to be healed, yet the woman with the issue of blood was the only person recorded to have been healed. The throng, the throng saw Jesus. They were even able to touch him, but they remained sick because seeing Jesus isn't what heals the sick. It's faith that receives. Did you just get that now? She had faith. The other people came. They wanted healing. They didn't get it. Why not? They didn't have the faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, they just thought he's going to take care of that. But you have to have faith. Love and faith. What does that say on, my, on those two pictures up there? You've got to have love. You've got to have that love for God, for Jesus, for the Holy Spirit over anything. And you can have faith for anything. And you, there will be no limits. But he's got to be number one. I've got to protect that money in my account. I can't give any away. I need that for my retirement. You just took that money before God, if that's what your heart is. See what he's doing? Oh, God is so good. Go ahead. If someone won't exercise faith for healing when they don't see Jesus, they won't exercise faith for healing if Jesus appeared to them. Faith doesn't, 
Faith doesn't come by seeing. Faith comes by hearing the word. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Just like you're hearing now. Amen. And what did I show on Sunday? Donna Jones. Was it Donna Jones that I shared her testimony? How about that testimony? 13 years. 13 years. Short-term memory gone. And now we went to Karis, and who do I see setting up on the stage? She's sitting there with Daniel, the music leader, Barry Bennett, and this other young man, and she's a teacher. You see what God does? He is phenomenal. Okay, go ahead. Okay. If someone exercises faith for healing when they don't, oh, I just read that already. No, real faith doesn't need to see yes. anything. Real faith doesn't need to see anything for it to operate. Dr. Lillian B. Yeomans, Yeomans wrote, real faith thrives on tests and trials and can withstand the teeth of any opposition for any length of time, for it rests on the forever settled word of God. John 20, 29 says, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Why does Jesus say this, this person is blessed? Because the person who believes can be assured that he or she will see. Believing comes before seeing. Seeing comes after believing. That is the divine order of faith, and it will never work to try to reverse that order. The principle of faith is, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Mark eleven twenty four. Now, are you blessed with all yes. spiritual blessings? Give me yes. a scripture. That's. Ephesians Let's go into 7. the Word. Let's give me a scripture. It's real close to the one I pray before every service. Where is Ephesians it? Ephesians one three three three. And what does it say? Who's got the microphone? Go ahead. Oh, I don't know what it says verbatim. I just know that's where it is. We're yeah. blessed with all blessed spiritual blessings. At least you know where it is, don't you? Yeah. Okay, Debbie, read it. Oh, Ephesians 1, chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. That's why, guys, you are going up here. You're going right up there because that's where you're blessed in heavenly places so that you can operate down here. Amen. But you're blessed in all heavenly places. Everything in this word, you have a blessing. The only thing we have to learn to do is to shut our mouth once we've prayed. But there's another thing that's really important. You've got to watch who you hang around on this earth because you see this guy on there? The devil? The crow? It's a crow. But the devil? will work through family members. He'll work through your neighbors. He'll work through your mate. He'll work through your parents. He'll work through... When are we going to get it? When are we going to get it? But I don't want to hurt their feelings. That's okay. Go ahead and die. I mean, think about it. Well, I don't want to upset my husband or my wife. I don't care. Go ahead and die. You want me to say your funeral? I'll say, you were a coward. Isn't that what it is? Well, I don't want to hurt anybody, Pat. Brenda, I don't want to hurt anybody. That's okay, then die. I really don't care. Because he took care of everything. He took care of everything. And he's blessed us in all what? Spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings in where? In where? The heavenly places. So that's where, I, that's where I've got to... That's where I've got to go, is the heavenly places. That's what I have to stand on. Emma, are you with me? Amen. Okay, let's quit right there. Believe the word next, right? Is that where we got? He sent his word. No, he sent his word. Let's yeah. go till, let's stop right there. Okay. And does anybody have anything they want to say here? Is there anything you want to add or have a testimony? Go ahead, Judy. Well, um, I had an appointment yesterday, and actually I was 
it was at the post office and I was walking out and um, the Holy Spirit said to me to give, there were two people that helped me like to, to do this appointment and the Holy Spirit said to give them a card. So I was already going out the door and at first I'm like, you know, really? And I got two cards out of my purse. I went back. I said, you guys were so nice and so helpful to me. I just wanted to bless you, and this is the most important question you'll ever be asked. And then I just left. Good. You gave him the card. If you were to die today, where would you go, heaven or hell? Most important question you'll ever be asked in your whole life. I carry them. I carry them, and I give them out. Go ahead. Two weeks ago in the morning, I was getting ready for work, standing in front of the bathroom mirror, and I wasn't leaning, I wasn't doing anything, and all of a sudden just this pain ripped across my back between my two shoulders. And I thought, okay, talked to it, told it to get off, and it did pretty much right away. And then last Wednesday, before I came here, I'm on the phone with Paul and just putting dishes away. Again, not leaning, not anything heavy in my hands, and it happened again, but so much worse. <laughs> Took my breath away, I could, could barely move. It's like, what is going on? And it went back and forth. It didn't stop right away. And so I kept talking to him and got off and kept telling it to get off of me, and it didn't right away. So when I came here Wednesday night, it still was painful. Like every move I made, it was like a major, I don't know, knife or something. But so when I got home, the Holy Spirit said, use the heating pad. And I did that for like three nights, and it kept decreasing. So I, I did not want to take time to go to the chiropractor. I felt like it was a pinched nerve. But, and I, it went away eventually, and I did not go to any doctor. Amen. Amen. That's persistence, isn't it? Amen. You know, let's say the seed. Let's look at the seed, everything comes from a seed. Every tree that's out there came from a seed, right? Mm -hmm. Every insect came from a seed. You, again, came from a seed. We were listening to this. I was listening to this today. So everything, why did God use a seed? Because the power is in that seed. Remember, when it drops in those little niches in the rocks, like when we're in Colorado driving along, I'm like, look at that. Look at that tree, that big tree sticking all down. Where does it even get nourished from? Because it's on a rock. Then uh, on my back porch at my house, you go around the side, one of the mullen plants, the little seed, there's a mullen plant sticking out from the side of the brick on the side of the stoop. And I'm thinking, boy, they get into there's minerals, there's got to be minerals in that concrete or something that it's drawn to. But God uses seed, and his word is the seed, and he tells us to take that seed, that's the word. Do you need money? My God supplies all of my needs according to his riches. Money, you come to me. That's what you say, and that money has to come because when you tell that money to come, you just put the seed in the ground of your heart. You are ground. Mm -hmm. And that will grow. And then you do like uh, George Pearson's. He's the prosperity man. He's, I prosper in every, every place he's going. I prosper. I always prosper. Money's always coming to me. I prosper. I love to give and I love to. You see what he's doing? And then we've got Jerry Savelle. He's the favor pastor. He has favor everywhere. He, do you see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We can have all of that. But we've got to know that there's the seed, and we put that seed in the ground. The nutrients from the ground come, and that's the catalyst, the seed. And the seed is in the soil and it grows. Did you get that? It grows. Do you want anything to add to that? No? It grows. And when it grows, it grows. 
Well, well, we, I, the word picture, we went over and we got some apples from her house. And I think we got like a bushel full of apples. <laughs> I think we got a lot of apples. And now I'm like, what am I going to do with all these apples? <laughs> we have all these apples now. And I'm like, so I was trying to get ideas like, okay, what can I do with apples? Okay, I can eat one every day. Okay, I can do this. But <laughs> expect the harvest. Exactly. Expect the harvest and expect that you're going to have money to put into the kingdom of God or expect that, yeah, it's just good. It is. And come in an expectation because harvest is here yeah. Yeah. right it now. Is. Now, remember, I told you about my, my uh, watermelon. How do we get the watermelon seeds out there? First, you, you spit them. Cordell is the one that him and I would spit, and then Keegan. Where's Keegan? Oh, he's in the back. So the three of us are spitting these watermelon seeds out in my front, right in that little section there. Okay? One seed came up this year. thing is really big. The first watermelon, how much did it weigh again? 28 pounds. And it was delicious inside. Mm -hmm. Then the other day, who picked it on Saturday? You picked it, and that was how much? Almost 20. 19 pounds, 6 ounces. And it was delicious. Mm -hmm. I still have some of it. And I'm just, yeah enjoying it every day. It doesn't rot like the store ones. Did you get that? Because it's all natural. And the tomato plant, one tomato plant. You all saw my tomato yes. plant. There's still, I started counting, there's about almost 76 uh, tomatoes on that yet. One plant. Here. I've been ooh, been picking raspberries since I don't know June, yep. and the same with strawberries. Now the strawberries are basically done. They're supposed to be ever bearing strawberries, which in my mind means they'll come early and then they'll come a li come late. These strawberries never quit. They just keep going and going and going. No, the strawberries. But the raspberries are ever bears, and they have ba basically been the same. Yeah. I've never, ever picked a raspberry in late October. Yeah. And I'm basically getting as many now Amen. as I have been for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they are delicious. They are. They she, are. Gave, she brought some on Saturday, and I hid them. <laughs> <laughs> Way in the back in the refrigerator. <laughs> I thought, I got to keep, like, Keegan's nose out of there. And, you know, there's just certain people, you know, don't you touch. <laughs> but they are delicious. And the beans, they were sweet. See, I like raw beans and sweet. But everything comes from a seed. The word of God is the seed. You take that seed and you speak whatever you have want. So each one of you think of something you have need of. Do you have need of healing? Do you have need of money? Do you, what do you have need of? Peace, love, joy. What do you have need of? Right now, think of that. In, what do you have need? Get a picture of it, of what you have need of. Then give me a scripture that fills that need because the scripture is the seed. By the stripes of Jesus, 1 Peter 2.24, there's your seed. I was healed. You just planted in that earth. Hmm? And he said again, you're going to get a better job. That's just the way God thinks. He's always multiplying us. Always multiplying us. And people are going to go, Amber, what are you doing? How come you got a new car? How come you because I was under the word of God. And I took the word, which is a seed, and I planted it in the ground of my heart by speaking it out loud. It went into my ear gates and down into, and it produced. Amen. But then you cannot let people steal it. Because right here is where they steal. So you don't tell them. You don't tell people what you're believing for if they're stealers. And they don't mean to do it. They don't mean to do it but they will steal it. 
not on your watch, is it? So is God good? Here, here, here is that. But I do too. I give that out because I want people saved. I want them to know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior because that book that I gave you as a gift tonight, you all have one. That If you have one, Deb, that's for your whole family. You have one, and you've got to start sharing it with your family and so on. Have them read it. I told Keisha, mm -hmm. have your family read it. Mm -hmm. You might have to help Gunner. We start it. We You're start, start reading it. Why? Because you want them to get an understanding, just like if you join the military, and there's going to be a battle, you're going to go and you're going to learn how to use your weapon. Or is that what you're going to do? You're going to, if you're going to, yeah, be prepared. And if you're going to drive some big tankers or something, you better learn how to do that. I'm not going to come along and say, Allie, slide on over. I'm going to drive that big tanker. I get in there and I say, how do I start it? And she's going to say, get out of that seat. Because I didn't get trained. But now I can drive a big semi. You've been trained? Sure. 18 wheeler. She just won't, won't let me on the road. <laughs> no, you don't have a CDL. <laughs> you see, all these excuses. I can't go on the road because I don't have a CDL license? Yes. I'll have to go get that too now. You should have did that during COVID because then you didn't have to take a truck out and test it. They would have just gave you a license. Oh, Pat, we can do that. No, she needed to, she needed to wait. Because <laughs> that little thing, when we're working out, she's got more muscle than I thought. How is she doing that so easy? Consistency. She's always done it. I mean, she's got mu You wouldn't mm -hmm. think there'd be any muscle there, she's but she's got it. <laughs> and Josh loves to pick on her. Mm -hmm. oh. But anyway, please take it, read it and share it with your family. Have your family read it. Don't force it onto anybody, but say to your kids, oh, you're going to read this now. You're going to read this. Right? Give it to your mate. Say, you're going to read this. But pray first that they're ready for it. We understand it. Okay, let's do this here. We're going to take communion, and then what we're going to do is, is we're going to take anybody who wants to give a tithe or an offering or whatever, remember, Whenever you sow into the kingdom of God, God promises you, you're going to get a harvest. Amen. You know, that is, do you have a, she's got one. So if God says, you give and it'll give on to you. In abundance to the full, to the overflow. Press down, shaken together. He's not kidding. He's doing it. Right? So why, why does he want me to take communion all the time? Why does he want me to do that? Remember my covenant. He took the lashes. He went into hell for me. He had the crown of thorns on him. He ransomed me. He bought me for a price. I'm not my own. I belong to him. <laughs> my daddy loves me. Does he love you? So, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Break that and eat that, knowing what he did for you. And what is, what is this grapefruit juice symbolizing to you? The blood of Jesus, and that's when he shed that blood. And when you said, Jesus, come into my heart. You became the righteousness of God, and he seated you in heavenly places. Guys, you have got it made. Do you know how beautiful it is out there? You know what? When I come to church on Sunday, you know why I dress up? I'm coming before the throne. I'm coming. I feel like Queen Esther. I'm coming before the throne, and I'm not going to miss out on it. But I want God to say, there's my little girl. She honors me. She loves me. You can dress any way you want. I really don't care. But I know that when I come, I want him to be so proud of me. And he is proud of me. 
But you know, I just feel bitter about myself when I'm dressed up. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Father, I thank you that you have made us the righteousness of God. You've covered our sins. We've been forgiven. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Let's drink. Now, where did the thingamajig go? Oh, they got her working down there. And Pastor Kenny is going to pray over that. Okay. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. Father, it was seed time, and we sow in the seed. And now, as Minister Kesa says tonight, it's harvest time. So, Father, we're believing for that harvest, and we know it's coming. And so we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just think, that's as simple as it is, and now he's going to bless you. That's his rules. That's his laws. Man doesn't think that that works, but God guarantees that it works. Now, real quick, anybody else have another testimony? Give it to me. Oh, excuse me, Debbie. I just want to say, um, tons of favor at work. I mean, since I started... I mean, what I've been making has increased just hugely. Um, I work with wonderful people. Um, the boss in the beginning, um, like I said, very, very, very nice and generous. But, I mean, he would let, us, let me go early sometimes or let us, and it might be five minutes. And um, now it's like, and it might be five minutes on a Friday. Now it's like, oh, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. What do you say we just leave at four today? Um, the one day he said, oh, why don't we leave at four today? And then a couple of minutes later, make it three thirty. No, let's leave at three. He said, you know, <laughs> and it happens more and more, um, and it's just a blessing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean. Just because you want to leave, you're the boss. You can leave. You can yeah. leave at any time. You don't have to tell me to leave. Right. But he does, tells us, you know, just go, yeah. Isn't that awesome? It is. It is a blessing. Ooh. I just have one. I just, I'm just blessed to be at home, um, homeschooling. And just to be home when Samuel gets home, that's a blessing. But it, I just... I just like, I like observing kids like you like oh, watching I kids. Do. I love watching I kids and just seeing what they're doing. And um, I was in yeah. the bathroom and we were watching, um, we were watching something on Israel. And it was one of the pastors were on and <laughs> Clark comes running to me, Mom, I don't, is there something evil on? Because they were talking in Hebrew. They were, he didn't know. <laughs> that it was Hebrew, so he didn't know that th this was something good. So he came to me, I don't know if it's evil, Mom. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then we went in there, and it was on Israel, so they were singing this little song. When I say, what is it? There's a song about holy city, cherry, cherry, bim. And, there was, and they were going back and forth. They would speak Hebrew, then they'd go back into English, Hebrew back into English. I'm like, no, that's fine. And I've just been blaring the Hebrew language now wow. and for him because I'm like, and, and reading about Israel. And it's been just such a joy for me because I right. want to know more about Israel. Right. And I want my kids to know and for them to appreciate it, um, that Israel is the apple of God's eye. Amen. And um, I've been able to do that, and I've been able to do it with Samuel too. And it's just a joy for me yeah. as a mom to see your kids um, you know you want to impart certain things to them and them to be willing to receive it so freely. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I do. And it's, do. it's a joy to be a t I, to teach. Yeah. That, you know, putting that into our children or, or if they are at school and come home, they can share and you can straighten them out and things help them out, you know, because you know the truth and you want your children to know the truth, mm -hmm. you know. 
So it is good. So, Father, we thank you so much. You're so good to us. Amen. You are so awesome to us. And we love you and we worship you. Oh, Daddy, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for leading and guiding us into all truth. Jesus, thank you for taking our place and buying us, purchasing us, purchasing us, setting us free. Oh, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And Father God, I ask for that anointing to come on to each one of us where we want to share that word of salvation everywhere we go. And we'll take those cards that you blessed us with, with the salvation message on, and give it, just give it to people. And they will know the truth, and the truth will set them free. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.